Hey everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video and I'm going to finally tackle one of the most requested top 10s I have ever seen pops up in my comments all the time and that are the 10 of the most broken decks in Hearthstone history. But I thought I'd take it one step further. I thought I'd make two top 10s. One top 10 including the most broken standard decks of all time and the most broken wild decks of all time. So... If you want to get that wild video, that one will be up tomorrow. Today we'll take a look at standard. Make sure to hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, get update when that goes live. Friendly reminder, about like 63% of my viewers are not yet subscribed, and I appreciate every single one of you that watch. If you feel I have earned your subscription and help push us towards that 8,000 and then the 10,000 sub milestone that we keep getting super close to, I would really appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. Anyways, enough of the shilling, enough of the hard selling. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the 10 most broken standard decks of all time. Starting at number 10, we have a pretty recent entry to the list. This deck was at its most powerful at the release of the Descent of Dragons expansion, and that is Galakron Shaman. First version that was nerfed literally just like after a week of this deck being absolutely out of control. Built around Galakron and Shutterwalk. Uh, Galakron, if you would fully invoke your Galakron, you get two 8-8 elementals with Rush. You could play this with a quest to get four 8-8s with Rush. And then, you know, you could play Shutterwalk and would replay that battle cry, get even more. And all of the invoke cards were nerfed. There's a one mana freeze. There's Corrupted Elementalist that uh, five men would invoke twice. The only card in the game that would invoke twice. And you Dragon's Pack, which was a five mana 10, 12 in taunt if double invoke. The deck was ridiculously out of control, and yeah, even after it got nerfed, it was still one of the best out there. Completely, basically broke the game at its release. It's definitely a worthy member of one of the most broken decks of all time. At number 9, we have Cube Lock. This deck became a thing during the Cobalt and Catacombs expansion, and became an absolute juggernaut once Razakis Priest got nerfed. More on that later. And was one of the most insanely powerful mana cheating decks of all time in standard. You had a five mana possessed lackey. You had a one mana dark pack that would destroy a friendly minion and heal for eight. And of course you have carnivorous cube. You have void lord, doom guard, school ban, defile. Just an absolute powerhouse of a deck. And became the absolute juggernaut in the meta. As I said as Razakis got nerfed. And eventually this deck did see a nerf I believe after, quickly after the next standard rotation absolute powerhouse of a deck it's so good that it still sees play in wild today despite all the nerfs and everything that's happened to it an absolute juggernaut and one of the most powerful decks of all time at number eight we have reno pocket galaxy conjurer's mage uh, this was at its height during the old doom expansion and basically was a completely and utterly broken deck because luna's pocket galaxy cost five mana and Conjurer's Calling cost three mana, so not only was it insanely busted at three, it's crazy good at four, but you could discover it off of Magic Trick to get even more copies. This deck was just ridiculous. Coining Pocket on four is just GG. Like, unless you're a hyper aggro deck, what are you going to do to contest all the, the onslaught of giant one mana minions, like zero mana mountain giants, and then you conjure? It's just... The deck was ridiculous, and it got nerfed pretty quickly after release of Old Doom, with Pocket Galaxy going to 7, Conjurers going to 4, but this deck was an absolute terror and one of the most busted decks of all time. Number 7, we have Rizakis Priest. This deck became the absolute juggernaut, one of the most broken priest decks of all time, well, actually the most broken priest deck of all time in standard, um, during the Cobalt and Catacombs expansion. It was very good during Frozen Throne. Very, very powerful. That's where Shadow Reaper Anwin came out. You have your Raza with your zero-man hero power, but... With Cobalt and Catacombs, you had Dustbreaker into the game, and you had, more importantly, Psychic Scream. Seven mana, shuffle all the minions into your uh, opponent's deck and just crush them. Clear everything, and it curves perfectly into Anduin. Just one of the most busted decks of all time. They eventually nerfed Raza to have a one mana hero power, basically to kill this deck. And, as you know, it's been reverted in Wild, and is basically the best deck in Wild today. So you can only imagine where, in 2020... If this deck is that busted and wild, how insanely crazy it was a few years back. So yeah, absolute juggernaut. One of the craziest, most powerful decks of all time. At number six, we have Pirate Warrior. And the main version we are taking a look at here is during the Mean Streets of Gadgetson expansion, where Small Time Buccaneer and Patches were introduced. Small Time Buccaneer 
uh, before it got nerfed, was a one mana one two to gain plus two attack when you had a weapon equipped. So you play small time buccaneer, you get patches, you play Nizoth's first mate, you just win the game. You're doing like eight seven damage on turn two uh, once your minions become active. It was just one of the most busted expansion day decks ever and basically dominated the meta until small time buccaneer was nerfed and still dominated after that um pirate warrior is still a staple in wild today it is just incredibly powerful this deck was so powerful it actually made me quit hearthstone for a few weeks and that's saying something for somebody who has played non-stop since they uh started during the gvg expansion and yeah this this was one of the most powerful aggro decks ever it was just super busted and got a lot of people their golden garrosh that didn't want to grind out those long control warrior games which was mainly the staple beforehand at number five we have jade druid the knights of the frozen throne rendition this was when ultimate infestation was introduced five mana spreading plague there was still a zero mana gain two mana crystals innervate you still had two mana wild growth you had still had five mana nourish you had fangel which would occur perfectly into it and this deck was absolutely ridiculously insane you could consistently like ui on like turn five just play growth and like innervate innervate coin ui it was just insane Five Men of Plague even made its own decks that were crazy, but in conjunction with Infinite Value and Jade Idol, the ridiculousness of its deck cannot be properly described. It was just crazy. It led to Innervate being nerfed. It led to Spreading Plague being nerfed. Eventually, Nourish was nerfed. Eventually, Wild Growth was nerfed. This deck was just a juggernaut. One of the most powerful things I've ever seen. The absurdity of the mana cheat, the absurdity of UI, and that card is still very good today, was just absolutely crazy and many of people still have like ptsd about five minute plague and all of that just absolutely crazy deck completely busted at number four we have grim patron warrior this deck popped up during black rock mountain when grim patron and emperor thorson came out and it was built around your war song commander you have your grim patrons and you have your frothings you make countless grim patrons you can buff up your frothing and you give it all charge practically ot king your opponent from an insanely amount high amount of health depending on how the board state line up it was quite consistently correct to not play minions to not give them like frothing buffs and also the mind games with patron warrior was insane this is if played properly patron warrior is arguably the best deck of all time i could easily put it at number one most broken if it was played absolutely perfectly the only detriment to this deck was it was very difficult to play and the average win rate on this deck was actually never particularly great but if you were an incredibly good player and you knew how to play this deck extremely well your win rate would be astronomical and could basically launch you to the stratosphere which i actually think is a really cool thing about the deck but it eventually got nerfed. Warsong Commander indeed got Warsong, coining the term, no longer giving minions with three attack or less charge, and the deck died. But man, this was one of the most incredibly powerful decks and fun to watch, in my opinion. Because if you watch someone like a master play it, like a life coach, it was just unbelievable to see what this deck could do. You think you're safe at like 50 health? No, no, no. Death Spite, Unstable Ghoul, Frothing Berserker with Grim Patrons, rip you. You got no chance against that. At number three, we have Quest Rogue. This deck came out during the Ungoro expansion and was absolutely broken out of the gate. You had to, It was built around the quest. You had to play the same minion of the same name four times, and then your minions were 5-5s five for the rest of the game. It seemed janky and not that good in theory, but the second it came out and people started playing with it, it was beyond busted. You had like Mimic Pod, Shadow Step, Igneous Elemental, all these ways that people would do to get it done. But you could consistently get this quest done on turns like three, four. And then you could prep it out. Prep was unnerfed. It would discount your spells by three. And then you just win the game. You have your, your Stone Tusk, Boars. You have all the stuff. Just charge, go face. Like it's five fives for the rest of the game. What are you going to do? It was an absolute terror, absolute juggernaut. And this deck was so busted that it's been directly nerfed multiple times as well as indirectly nerfed such as like giggling and better getting nerfed. It was just ridiculous, unbelievably good and saw play throughout countless metas until eventually it got power creeped and nerfed so much that it no longer is really a thing in wild. But oh my goodness, day one quest rogue is one of the most disgusting, ridiculous things I've ever seen. 
But it could lose to aggro. There were strategies that beat it. But the next two decks, I don't know. Were there really strategies to beat these ones? Let's take a look. At number two, we have Undertaker Hunter. I will admit, I didn't play when this deck came out. But I've seen enough highlights. I've heard enough horror stories and all that to know how unbelievably powerful and broken this deck was. Undertaker obviously was the centerfold of it. It's a one mana one two. The game plus one plus one for every death rattle minion summoned. And yeah, you played it on one. You played a loot hoarder, a mad scientist, a hard creeper, a leper gnome. You snowball the game and you have your pure aggression with kill commands. You have Iron Beak Owl to get through taunts. You have Lothab to lock your opponent out. It was just beyond ridiculous. The snowball effect of an Undertaker getting out of control was insane. And it was the most, like, one of the most popular decks of all time. I believe Ixar, I saw in, like, an old interview said it comprised, like, 30 40% of the meta, the win rate on it is one of the highest ever because the deck was pretty easy to play. You play Undertaker, you play your one drops, you play your death rattles, you go face. And it was incredibly powerful. And Undertaker eventually got nerfed to only give plus one attack. And the deck is no longer a thing. And today probably wouldn't be a thing on nerf, but it was an absolute terror way back in the day when this came out during the next Ramis expansion or adventure. And my goodness, how time flies. And number one, the most broken deck of all time, even more so, in my opinion, than Undertaker Hunter, is a very recent deck, only one expansion ago, day one, Aggro Demon Hunter. This deck literally broke Hearthstone. It broke it. It created a, a, a standard meta where only Demon Hunter had a positive win percentage. This was the same in Arena. This was the same in WoW, but we're, going, we're talking about standard. This deck was just so stupid broken that we saw a nerf after one day. We saw Skull of Gul'dan get nerfed. We saw I-Beam get nerfed. Eldraki Warblades get nerfed. Imprisoned Anton all got nerfed day one. That has never even close to happened before. This deck was just stupid. On expansion day, you were either playing Demon Hunter and winning... In a mirror match or losing in a mirror match or you were losing to demon hunter playing basically anything else the deck was so overpowered so ridiculous it basically launched my youtube channel with a series of rants and ravings about how insane demon hunter was so thank you blizzard for that demon hunter no longer is that ridiculous overpowered deck it's very strong but back then day one is the most oppressive ridiculous thing i've ever seen and we had just come off of galakron shaman just come off of evolve shaman and i can't think of a more broken deck where it literally made every single class in the game unplayable so there you have it there are my picks for the top 10 most broken standard decks of all time there are plenty of decks you can include on this list that i didn't for example like pre-nerf auctioneer leroy uh miracle rogue i didn't play that deck like at all and I really wanted to put it on here, but again, I couldn't find the room. I thought these 10 were just a little bit more powerful, but I could totally be wrong. And there's plenty of others, so let me know in the comments below. What do you feel are the most broken decks of all time? What did I get right? What did I get wrong? And again, tomorrow will be the wild video, so make sure you sub. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get uh, notified on that one. Have a great day. Stay salty, my friends. <laughs>